Praise the Lord, everybody. Pastor Steve Sterling from the Dallas Revival Center. You know, it's a beautiful day today in Dallas. Uh, warm weather and just a beautiful skyline. <clears throat> a lot of things happening here. Uh, it's just, just amazing uh, how things just unfold and uh, how destiny just is uncovered and how providence just moves in its uh, purpose and power, privileges, and, and everything is just... Uh, uh, watched over and cared for, uh, nestling in God's uh, personal uh, outlook and care and uh, concern, and how He just tucks everything in and just brings you to the wind in every situation. We give God all the glory and all the praise. Hallelujah. In this June Bune season, praise God. I think I'm making this on the 15th, about halfway through June, but Psalm 32 7 really just sticks to me. You are my hiding place. You will protect me from trouble. I love that. He's my hiding place. I'm anchored in him. You know, he's gone behind the veil. And we have an anchor of hope behind the veil as well. He entered in for us. And our place is our representative. And uh, everything dials out from inside the throne room, inside the holies of holies. So we've got inside out now, not outside in. So you're, a, you're my hiding place. You will protect me from trouble. Oh, I love that protection from trouble. He sure does. Hey, man, just last night when I was on the highway and I uh, couldn't use my uh, Google Maps, uh, just giving me non-audio directions and didn't know what I was going to do. I started praying in the spirit. God gave me the exact diagram, what to do on the highway, how to get back. Everything was bow shaped and safe. <laughs> you will protect me from trouble. And surround me with songs of deliverance. Do you understand that? Surround me with songs of deliverance. Don't let those uh, leading hits leave your center of circumference. I mean, let your, your ear gate be open constantly to the songs of deliverance that uh, God's angels procure for you. And to the extent that he does this, it's just so prolific. I mean, we just have to see the in and out of this thing. In Psalm 27, 3, New International Version, Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. The war break out against me. Even then, I will be confident. So you have no fear in, in, in total confidence. New Living Translation, Though a mighty army surrounds me, my heart will be not afraid. I will uh, even if I'm attacked, I will remain confident. Even if I'm attacked, I will remain confident. There it is. So you've got it. It's just sensational, fantastic, and beautiful. There's another uh, inside out for David. If you read Psalm 3.6, he said, I will not fear, though myrids set themselves against me on every side. Though myrids set themselves against me on every side, I will not fear it's clear if you're sincere you can hear what god is saying and have the utmost confidence and a no fear edict working constantly consistently in your life even if the enemy is totally absorbed and upset in you and constantly diffusing his allegations and bringing such uh terrorizing uh assignments and just seemed like it's in, incessant. You know, I like what it says in Isaiah 41, 11 and 12. Behold, all they that were incensed against thee, incensed against thee, shall be ashamed and confounded, ashamed and confused. <laughs> uh, they shall be as nothing. Look at that. They shall be as nothing. They that strive with thee shall even perish. Look, be as nothing, shall perish. I'm talking about the assignments of incessantness where people are just beside themselves, upside down against you. <laughs> Glory to God. I mean, the scripture is totally ridiculous when it talks about how congruent everything is and how conquest works and how besides our ordinary, the extraordinary is um, aligned in our behalf psalm 34 7 the angel of the lord encamps around about those who fear him and he delivers them the angel of the lord encamps around about them who fear him and he delivers them that's the captain the host leading the host 
into uh, victory uh, at all times and from all sides, no matter where it's hatched from. God is attached to you in that type of dynamic. Ooh, hallelujah. Psalm 91, 11, for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all of thy ways, to keep thee in all of thy ways. We just have to have our eyes open, don't we? To be able to see it, to perceive it, to recognize it, to discern it. You've got to catch a hold of this. Second Kings 6, 17, and Elijah prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountains were full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. Amen. Second Kings 19.35, And it came to pass that the angel of the Lord went out and smote the camp of the Assyrians in hundred and fourscore and five thousand. When they arose early in the morning, behold, they were all as dead corpses. My God, my God, my God. You've got to be kidding me how galvanized and how good and how in charge God is uh, before us and behind us and inside and around us. It's just uh, it's just outside of our ability to even comprehend. I mean, it's so gate. It's it's a it's a gate. It's an open gate. I mean, open door, open window, open portal. You know. When you decide that God is uh, who he is and can do what he can do, and he's all that and more, uh, and you know that from your foundation down to your core, to the very intimate soul of yourself, to the highest possible uh, potential of uh, celestial heavens that you reach, uh, and that there is no breach there, and you can just, I mean, move. And when you cry out to God, God hears and God's a listen listens and God moves. You know, Psalm 107, 6, they cried out to the Lord in their trouble and he delivered them from their distresses. Look at that. From all of their distresses. What are you distressed about? What are you disturbed about? What are you upset about? What has got you bewildered and befuddled and muddled? That's what I want to know. Hallelujah. You know, we just love First John 5, 4 and and five, for everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Uh, who is this that overcomes the world? Only the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Well, my goodness. That's an easy thing, isn't it? Yes, that's a very easy thing to believe. Yes, Lord. I mean, God's fighting for us. He's addressing every issue. He's addressing every dilemma. He's addressing every concern. He's addressing every pitfall. He's addressing every uh, evil aligned and assigned thing. You know, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 and 4. He does it with specific and prolific artillery from another world. You know, for though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have, look at this, divine power to demolish strongholds. Divine power to demolish strongholds. Do you understand what I'm saying? Divine power to demolish, demolish, demolish strongholds. Anything standing in the way, anything getting in the way, anything gapping you, anything putting you in disarray, anything trying to outman, outmine, outmaneuver you is being undone. And we have won through the sun. <laughs> You know, the scripture teaches us clearly that we're to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. And that's a fact. And that's Ephesians 6. You just read it. Uh, verse 10 to verse 18. And then, of course, I love Romans 8, 1 to 10, but I'm going to read it all. But therefore, there is now, therefore, now, 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 now. Therefore, no condemnation, inferiority, or guilt to those who are in Christ Jesus, who trust him in all of his merits and all of his finished works on the cross because um, through the Lord Jesus Christ, the law of the spirit of life gives life and sets us free from the law of sin and death. The law of sin and death. What the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh as an offering for sin, condemn sin in the flesh. So I don't care how fleshed out you feel, how wigged out you feel, how ragged out you feel. If you feel like 
you're under condemnation and guilt and you're just sunk to the bottom and you can't find the top, I'm telling you right now, just drop down to the Son of God, hallelujah, and, and say, I appropriate his offering for my sin, my sinfulness in my, his sin offering for my sinfulness in my weakness, in the weakness of my flesh. He has condemned sin in the flesh, done away with it, annihilated it, put the gauntlet down on it, uh, judged it as no consequence to you and to I. Hallelujah. From the earth to the sky, there are no limits what God is doing. And, of course, just pick up the banner, Psalm 91, for those of you that are just so inundated that you can't find, uh, you know, the top or the bottom, you know. Psalm 91, uh, whoever dwells in the secret or the, or the shelter of the Almighty and uh, rests in the shadow of the Almighty, they will say of the Lord, He is our refuge and our fortress. In God whom we trust. Woo, hallelujah. He shall save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. I'm telling you right now, he is faithful. And let that shield you and be your rampant and know as confused and as noised out as your brain is and as your environment is and as toasted as you feel. Just know that his faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear for the terror by night nor the arrow that flies by day. Yes, amen. I'll say of the Lord, he's my refuge, verse 9. The most high is my dwelling place. There it is. Got to love it. Got to love it, man. Remember, what you got to do is just let the twos roll. Let the twos roll. Second Samuel 2, 2, 2. There's four twos there. He said, the Lord is my rock. He is my protection or my fortress. In other words, he's my steadiness and my sturdiness. Even though everything seems topsy-turvy and everything just feel like a drunken man sometimes, out of control, don't know what you're going to do, don't know where you're going to go, don't know how you're going to accomplish what you need to accomplish. The Lord is my rock. He's my steadiness, my sturdiness, my foundation, my trust. He's my fortress. He's my protection while I'm going through it. I'm get, going through to get through where he wants me to go. And he is my deliverer. He is my deliverer. Glory to God. Psalm 34, 4, I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all of my fears. And you know what? When it doesn't look like you have information, it doesn't look like you have knowledge, you got it all. First John 2, 20, but you have been anointed by the Holy One and you have all knowledge. You've been anointed by the Holy One and you have all knowledge. What more do you need? You have everything you need, all knowledge, all wisdom, all understanding and all unction to function in extra ordinary ways. Ooh. And I love this in Second Peter 2, 9. It says, the Lord knows how to rescue the godly from trials. The Lord knows how to rescue the godly from trials. Second Peter 2, 9. Second Peter 2, 9. God knows how to rescue the godly from trials. There it is. And I like this, and this is probably my final scripture. It says in Isaiah 43, 13, also henceforth, I am he. There is none who can deliver from my hand. When God begins to move, watch out. You've got the title deed to everything. Everything in God dimensions at every level. Hallelujah. Also henceforth, I am he. There is none who can deliver from my hand. I will work, and who can turn it back? I will work, and who can can turn it back there it is well god bless and god's best have a great day in the neighborhood it's understood we knew we could and he would and he should and he is <laughs> doing it for you right now bye-bye god bless god's best